recently, a few months ago, an EPU group signed a partnership with SECAM. Uh, mm -hmm. We signed that partnership at the Vatican uh, in Rome, uh, making APU group uh, the public relation agency of the Catholic Church right. uh, in Africa. Right, right. That's, that's quite interesting. And um, let's, let's switch from that and talk about sports now. Mm -hmm. So how is the, the APO group promoting the growth of sports in Africa? And uh, what type of sports are you promoting? Well, the list is long. Uh, yeah. we, are the, um, we are providing uh, a public relation uh, to FIFA across Africa. So we are, in fact, the, the public relation agency of FIFA in Africa, but also so FIFA, the governing body of soccer, football. We are also the uh, um, public relation agency in Africa for the NBA, mm -hmm. uh, for the Basketball Africa League. Okay. Uh, we are the main official sponsor of Rugby Africa, which is a governing body of rugby in Africa. Uh, we are uh, the official partner of the Olympic movement in Africa, so uh, ANOCA, which is the uh, Association of National Olympic Committee of Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, we are also uh, the only African uh, partner of um, Olympic de Marseille, which is a French uh, iconic uh, uh, football club. Uh, we also have a partnership with SEED, uh, which stands for Sport, Education uh, and Development, which is based out of, the, out of Senegal, which is providing... Uh, sport and education. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, obviously, we uh, also have a partnership with um, AIPS, which is the International Press Sport Association. Uh, and I hope I'm not uh, forgetting uh, anything. We, are also, uh, we have a very close tie with Vivendi Sport. Uh, so Vivendi, uh, Vivendi Group is a French headquartered uh, um, uh, company, uh, 16 billion turnover in uh, 2020. I'm talking 16 billion uh, dollars. Uh, and uh, they own uh, Universal Music Group, they own Canal Plus, they own Avas, but they also have a subsidiary called Vivendi Sport, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, uh, organizing, uh, designing, organizing, delivering uh, international sports events specifically in Africa. So with Vivendi, uh, we'll be, for instance, in charge of the promotion of the uh, next Africa Cup of Nations. Mm. So how long, how long has the APO Group been doing all of this? All well, of these, you know, partnerships, yeah. all of these, you know, great achievements in the communication yeah. field. Well, the company started in 2007. Yeah. Uh, they said we will celebrate our 15th anniversary uh, this year. Um, but obviously, uh, those kind of partnerships, that the creation of that ecosystem, uh, ranging from uh, sport to music, for instance, we are also the, uh, the uh, public relations agency of uh, Afro Nation, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, coming to Ghana uh, at the end of the year. Uh, the Afro-Nation Festival will be in Ghana yeah. uh, in uh, December 29 and 30, I think. Uh, well, I think, I think we actually started uh, really uh, building an ecosystem in, in uh, very varied uh, uh, industries um, back in 2015, yeah, something like that. You know? Before that, we were just busy building a company, you know? building a business. Mm -hmm. And then uh, maybe you spend the first years to... Uh, you know, to uh, make sure you have, a, you have a strong business model and then, uh, well, uh, then you can, you can start uh, looking at uh, uh, what you can do uh, and how you can use uh, your company to, uh, to, uh, to promote the African continent, to support a few uh, uh, causes here and there. Uh, that's how that it is in that, with that intent that we first uh, became the, the main official sponsor of Rugby Africa, for instance. Yeah. Uh, the idea was to show the world that uh, Africa was not only about, uh, you know, conflict and poverty, etc. that we had rugby, not only in South Africa, mm -hmm. but uh, in Ghana, for instance, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, in Kenya, etc., etc. Uh, and so, um, because we are also the uh, strategic partner of Getty Images in Africa, the idea was to put as many pictures about African rugby we could uh, on Getty Images, so it was made available to, uh, uh, to the media across the world. The idea, eventually, uh, uh, is to change the, the image of the continent. There are so many international media which are, you know, conveying the idea of, uh, you know, only uh, uh, poverty, poverty and etc. Et 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 so, uh, mm. so, you know, the idea is to uh, share good news. Uh, when you are in the industry of public relation and press release distribution, in fact, 99% uh, of the news you are disseminating to the world uh, are good news. Mm. So, in terms of helping countries like Ghana and, you know, the rest of Africa, benefit from these outstanding engagements how can how can APO you know do that well you know uh, uh, in fact we are not working uh, with a lot of governments uh, so uh, so uh, uh, we are working mainly with multinational companies they said and, and institutions um, there are a few uh, governments which approached us to promote their 
uh, tourism or attract uh, investors, etc., etc. It's not it's not necessarily something we are we are we are we are um, you know uh, very eager eager to do. We find that it's uh, usually extremely difficult to work with governments. Uh, we are very good. Uh, we are very uh, happy to work with corporation companies. Uh, they don't. Uh, uh, they allow us not to, to face the same challenge we will face with, with government. So uh, uh, we are here for governments, for African governments, if uh, they know where to find us, um, but, uh, but we are not chasing them. Mm. Right. And, and, you know, speaking about the work that you're doing in, in countries like Ghana specifically, can you help us, give us a scope, you know, of, of the visibility of APO, the APO group, and what you're really doing in the country? Well, in Ghana, uh, just to give you an example, uh, we are the Pan-African PR agency of uh, Canon, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the cameras and printers, etc. And uh, recently, you may have noticed, uh, I think, uh, I don't remember if it was like maybe a year ago or so, uh, one of the buildings, I don't remember which building it was, uh, which was uh, wrapped up in a, in a, uh, in a, with pictures and image, etc. Well, we organized that uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, in fact, it was organized from, uh, from Egypt, uh, but, I mean, we get in touch with, uh, I think, the minister. Uh, I, I myself spoke to the minister of tourism at the time. I put it, I organized a call for him with the, uh, the head of Africa at Canon, and they end up doing this. So uh, Ghana is not, uh, is not a, a, a huge market for us, uh, to, be, uh, to, be clear, to be clear, to be honest. But we have, uh, from time to time, uh, you know, clients uh, which want to, uh, you know, organize a press conference, organize an interview, etc., etc. And so we follow our clients where they need us, right? Right. Now, um, women entrepreneurship across Africa is, is growing fast. Mm -hmm. And so being a principal partner to the African Women Entrepreneurship and Innovation Forum, um, how would you say African women can become successful entrepreneurs? Uh, men, men, they are already. Yes. They are already, right? Yes. So, uh, Lots of African women run the informal sector, for example, in a country like that. They are already. They are yeah. already. So, uh, I mean, the idea is how can we um, uh, empower them even more uh, and, uh, and make sure they have uh, um, the education, the, the diploma, access to, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the financing, etc., etc. Well, as you mentioned, we have a partnership since, uh, uh, I don't know, probably four or five years with AWIF, Africa Women Innovation Entrepreneurship uh, Forum, uh, and uh, Irene Ochim, which is the, uh, which is the founder. And um, we are extremely proud to support that event. Uh, uh, as a side event, we are organizing the APU Group African Women in Media Award, uh, which is, uh, in fact, uh, uh, recognizing African women journalists which are writing a piece or a report or news or story about women entrepreneurs, um, because we want to encourage that, to show uh, uh, little girls and, 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 and young women that uh, it's, uh, you know, they, can become, they can become entrepreneurs, so to show them like role models, if you wish, um, and I think I think uh, when when it comes to uh, you know woman empowerment and woman entrepreneurship, it's uh, it's happening. It's happening right now. So we are just glad to be part of the of the movement. Mm. Now, um, coming back to sports, because that's one area that you're mm. also very interested in. Uh, we understand that you you offer new opportunities to young players to present a positive african image and positive african stories on the international stage so coming from from that point how can you you know advise the sports governing bodies for example in in ghana and in other african countries on how best they can you know attract sponsors and how best they can really do the work of pushing you know the success story of, of, of the african story of sports you know you know out there internationally well, two, two questions here. Uh, yeah. First of all, when it comes to the, the promotion of athletes, um, um, I mean, I, I believe it's, it's, it's extremely important, again, to show to the world another image of the continent. Um, you heard about MMA, right? Yeah, um, mixed martial arts. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know that the three, currently the three champions of the world of MMA are three Africans. They are not from African descent, they are African citizens. Uh, two are, if I'm not mistaken, two are from Nigeria, one, of, one is from Cameroon. Mm -hmm. um, and you see, uh, I mean, everyone knows about those uh, uh, football players which are from uh, Africa and which are now playing, you know, uh, in Europe, etc., etc. The assessment is because of um, very established reasons. Uh, uh, when you give uh, African athletes uh, the right... Uh, uh, um, opportunity, the right setting, I'm, I'm talking nutrition, I'm talking 
uh, you know, uh, gym, uh, coaching, etc., etc., they are performing on a global stage and they are doing extremely well, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I mean, uh, Africa had, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, 900 athletes participating to the uh, um, Tokyo Olympics. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, something like uh, 90 uh, of them um, uh, received a, a medal. Um, so we at APU, we want the world to know that. We just want the world to know that. That Africa, again, is not about only about conflict and poverty, etc., mm -hmm. etc. And the way we do that is we are partnering with all the sports organizations, again, the Olympic Movement in Africa, uh, NBA, Basketball Africa League, Rugby Africa, uh, I forgot, I told you I would forget something. I forgot Team Kubeka. Mm -hmm. Team Kubeka is the only African professional cycling team right. based out of South Africa. They were the first uh, cycling team to put uh, an African citizen mm -hmm. on the Tour de France, which is the pinnacle of uh, cycling. cycling right? yeah. um, you have another factor also, which is the fact that uh, many uh, more and more international governing body of sports are organizing uh, sports event on the African continent. In 2026, you will have uh, the uh, very first Olympic competition uh, held, organized on the African soil, and that will be the uh, um, Youth Olympics in Dakar in Senegal. Uh, after that, you will have the um, um, global, I, I don't remember the name exactly of the competition, but the, but the worldwide cycling, uh, the World Cup cycling something in Rwanda, in Kigali. After that, you will have the uh, World Cup of cricket in uh, both, I believe, South Africa and Zimbabwe. So more and more, you have uh, uh, international events, uh, international sports, sports events happening on the African and the African continent. And so um, we have identified sport as as, as a, a great way to uh, uh, participate, changing the narrative about about the continent. Uh, but uh, it just happened that Africa, uh, sorry, sport is also is also a business, uh, and so uh, and so it's a it's a it's a growing business at, at APU Group. It's a becoming a, a big, bigger and bigger part of, uh, of the turnover of, of the company, in fact. Mm. So with regard to also telling the, because I see that this is all about telling the positive story of Africa. Correct. I mean, in all of these, even sports and disciplines, you know, mm -hmm. what have you, are there any major hurdles that, you know, the sports governing bodies, you know, on the African continent in the country, well, yeah. are there any major hurdles that they should be looking so at you want to me, you, you, So you, those major yeah, hurdles and yeah, how they should yeah. surmount. You, you want me to ask to answer that question, right? <laughs> okay. So I will answer that yes. question, and I will tell you this: I gave a conference not that long ago uh, in Egypt uh, about that very topic. Yeah. The idea is, I will try to make it simple. We are working with, with uh, all those governing bodies, which is quite unique. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure there are a lot of organizations which are working simultaneously with uh, FIFA, NBA, Basketball Africa League, uh, the Olympic Movement in Africa, uh, Team Quebec, Rugby Africa, uh, and I may have forgot a few, right? So we are able to compare, we are able to see. NBA and Basketball Africa League uh, is, uh, is specific because NBA is not a sport governing body. NBA is a company, NBA is a, is a corporation. They don't, they don't even identify themselves as a sport uh, company or sport corporation. They identify themselves as an entre un entertainment company. If you go on their website, they will tell you we are a company and we are in the entertainment business. Yeah. Uh, so it's different from FIFA, from Rugby Africa, uh, from the Olympic movement in Africa, etc., which are associations, uh, governing body and international sports federation, the way, uh, the way we can understand it. Uh, the point is, if a uh, sports governing body in Africa want to attract sponsors, they need to professionalize. And I will... Uh, I will say this, um, uh, uh, it's okay to um, uh, uh, um, be passionate about uh, the sport, uh, it's okay to be passionate about uh, football, rugby, uh, judo, uh, taekwondo, whatever, and so eventually to become the president of the national committee or the international committee or the African committee, etc. But it is not enough. Being, being passionate with the sport is not enough to guarantee the development of your discipline, of your sport. Mm -hmm. And so you need to professionalize. Okay. Uh, you need to hire the right people. Use the, ri use the right suppliers. And luckily there are plenty of uh, uh, organizations 
uh, which can help you package your assets, sell them, make more money. I don't know if you, uh, if you uh, understand, uh, maybe I should be more clear. Uh, across the continent, you have plenty of sport federations, national, international, which uh, have uh, 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 very interesting assets. Mm -hmm. They just don't know how to sell it. They don't know how to package them. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to sell it. They don't, have, they don't know what kind of document the corporation are expecting. They don't know how to price them. Uh, and so that's exactly what we are doing uh, in partnership with Vivendi Sport. We are helping those uh, sport federation, clubs also, to uh, identify their assets. What is it they have which could be interesting uh, from the point of view of corporations or maybe institutions, sometimes institutions may be also interested to, to sponsor, how to package this, to design this, how to sell it, how to price it, how to deliver it. And so uh, uh, it's the, the key word here is professionalization okay. and to understand that it's not because you are a fanatic about a sport, you love the sport, uh, and so you, are, you, are, you ended up being the president of your sport federation. Right? It's not because you are there that you are the, the best person to actually develop the sport. You will need help and you will need professionals. Right. So um, before, before we go, is there anything else that you would like to add? Apart from thank you. you know? <laughs> yeah, and, apart from thank you. And remind and perhaps you, any, any, you know? any tips on how communicators in Ghana can make it in the industry? Well, listen, I think they are doing well already. Huh? Mm. I think they are doing well. Uh, um, the only, the only um, thing, and it's not specific to Ghana, is that usually you see, you see a lot of uh, small actors, small players, uh, which, um, you know, I'm talking one person, two person, three person, you know, uh, freelancers, which are building team ad hoc when they have a project or something like that. Um, and uh, they, have, uh, they have difficulty to grow. Um, um, and it's uh, another characteristic, and again, it's not... Uh, specific to Ghana, is that you will have uh, public relations agencies which are only active in Ghana. They are not going to be active in, in more than one country. Uh, so the, it, it's very difficult to, uh, it's, not, it's not that difficult to create or to say, to state, I'm, a, I'm now a PR agency on my own, you know, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. a jack of all trade, etc. Um, anyone can do that. But growing a business, developing a business uh, is something else. And you ask me if I have something uh, last to, to add, yes. Uh, um, uh, I'll see you at Afro Nation, you know, uh, <laughs> that uh, amazing music festival, yeah. beach festival, yeah. at the end of the year, yeah. uh, I think it's 29 and 30 of December. We are very proud to be a, to be a partner. Thank you very much uh, for joining us in the studio and uh, having this conversation with us, uh, Nicola. Thank you. Pompigny Monya. Yeah, that, this, yeah that, that was <laughs> better. Yeah. Chairman and founder of the APO Group uh, speaking to us this morning here on GH Today. Um, do stay tuned. Uh, when